On this week's episode, Westport announces building more boats. Westport announces launching a boat. My boat is underway again. And I'm Doug. Welcome everyone to Yacht Industry News. I'm Captain Doug Meyer. That's right, my first name actually is Captain. I had that legally changed. Uh, if you don't know, I am a yacht captain, which means I'm a god at sea. Which means absolutely nothing when I'm standing next to a ship captain. <laughs> Anyway, uh, a couple of things. Welcome to the show. We got a lot going on. First of all, I'm very happy to report that my boat got fixed. We're going to talk about Westport. They're building a couple of new spec boats. They're also, uh, Westport's also launching one. We're going to talk about the uh, Genoa. Uh, charter yacht show and I did not say Barcelona and that's for a reason and in crew corner uh, I'm going to talk about references uh, reference letters what uh, you should expect what you should get what which ones are good which ones are bad what are, you, what are you supposed to do if you don't get one all that kind of stuff so please stick around for crew corner so we're going to jump right into it let's go Okay, first off, Westport. Actually, let me tell you guys something that's really, really cool. Yacht Industry News, this show, is the number one internet-based, Facebook-based yacht industry news show, and we're number one. I have to check my numbers, but I'm pretty sure we probably are. <laughs> anyway, if we try and get it right, sometimes we don't always get it right. If we get it wrong, we'll talk about it next week when you guys aren't watching, so you know that, uh, uh, so you don't know that I fixed it. All right, anyway, moving on to Westport. Westport has announced they're building three brand new 41 meter, that's 135 foot uh, yachts. They are absolutely spectacular. It's a little bit of a strange design. They are currently not saying they're replacing the 130 Westport, which is the Tri-Deck. I love that boat one day. Maybe I'll even drive one. If I, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But this is not replacing that because this is a raised pilot house. Now, uh, they're building them on spec. This is the uh, stretched version of the 125, which is a stretched version of the 120. And um, somebody thinks that these things are, this is the way to go. So um, what what's, are the highlights of this? Well, it's 125 feet long. I'm sorry, it's 135 feet long. It's uh, top speed of 25 knots, cruising at 20. Now, here's where we get into the question mark. Doo -doo, why? Um, it's uh, gonna have five guest cabins, 10 people, and it's only gonna have cruise quarters for five. I did the math. I don't know a 41 meter, how five crew are gonna get the job done. That's not up to me, because I don't build boats, I just report on it. But anyway, congratulations Westport. We on, uh, eagerly await to see this thing in person. Okay, now we're moving on to different yacht industry news. Westport's launching a 117 which is also brand new before i get into that though let me guys remind you of elite marine air conditioning because these guys just finished up on my boat and i'll show you pictures if you want uh they did an absolutely absolutely spectacular job i couldn't be happier i have no problem writing a check and that usually means that uh, people did a good job also hargrave custom yachts just launched a 118 okay that was over in the mediterranean there hargrave sending the commissioning team over there and the owners are going to enjoy this wonderful boat over in the med for a season before bringing it over here when it gets here i'll be on it to do to do a show on it absolutely 100 percent. that'll be in the fall okay now what about Westport's other boat? Well, they're launching, they've just connected the hull to the superstructure. Here's a picture of it. It's a 117. I don't know if this takes over the spot of the 112. 112's a, a, a crazy good boat. I mean, everybody, you know, loves them. But this boat is the right size, 117 feet. I'm not biased because Renaissance is 116, but I just think these boats are the right size for the Bahamas and New England and uh, Florida. Probably not for the Mediterranean and might get tossed around down in the Caribbean. But this thing just looks great. It's got the right dimensions. It also cruises at, well, it's actually a little sh uh, slower. It does a top speed of 24 knots versus the 41 meter, but it does cruise at the same 20 knots. Now, here's the thing. It does have the same five guest cabins. Okay, that's okay. Uh, so that means 10, 10, 10 guests on board, but it has cruise quarters for five, which makes a lot more sense in this size boat, all right? The other one, cruise quarters for five and a 135 footer is a bit of a stretch. Most of the boats over there in that size range have uh, six or seven, six, seven, eight crew on board, you know, engineers and stuff like that. Anyway, 
this Westport 117 will be at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show in October, and I'm going to do everything I can to get on it. All right, next, before we get into the uh, Genoa Mediterranean uh, Boat uh, Yacht Charter Show, didn't notice I didn't say Barcelona, I want to remind you guys of MPT because we are talking about boats and cruise quarters and MPT. If you want to get in those cruise quarters, you need to go to MPT. It's literally one school, unlimited possibilities. Trust me when I say this, you guys will be very, very happy with MPT. And guess what? While you're searching for schools, you're going to need the internet. And Marine Data Solutions has got such cool things going on right now. They've got this system where you can have cellular, you can have um, uh, Starlink, you can have anything you want seamlessly blending. I was just going through a demo with them on this last week because uh, we're putting it on our boat. And uh, it, it's just really great. So check them out. Back to the charter show. Okay, it's happening right now. I think till Thursday or Friday. Uh, after five years being in Barcelona, it is actually back to uh, Genoa, okay? It started out in Genoa a long time ago. Now, a couple of stats. This is a charter boat show. It's a Mediterranean charter boat show. Uh, an early look at the numbers. Uh, that means the boat's showing up. And I'm just talking about the boats at the charter show. I'm not talking about, you know, how many boats are chartering. The average length, that means taking all the boats that are there, has fallen to uh, from 52.3 meters to 45.3 meters. In other words, the charter boats in attendance have gotten slightly smaller. The average has gone slightly up, all right? And then the other thing is, this is important, the attendance has doubled. Now, a lot of people are calling this a huge win. It's a huge win for the, uh, the, the, the guys running the charter show, but generally speaking, when you have a huge amount of boats attending uh, a charter show, it means that they're not chartering as much. I ran a very, I still run a very successful charter program. We wouldn't go to the boat shows. We didn't need them. If our, if our calendar was booked for the next 12 months, why, why spend the money? So if there's more boats at the charter show, it means that they've got more time to do that and they probably have less charters. Uh, you know, I also every other year tried to attend one charter show to just make sure everybody reminds our members were out there. So anyway, take it for what it's worth. These aren't my numbers. This, these are the boat show numbers. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Now, on average, since COVID, this is a fact, factual number. Uh, the amount of charters has declined 10.7%. Uh, I think charters went up in COVID 30%. So that would be a 20% still higher than before COVID. I don't know. I know this contradicts some of the stuff that I've said in earlier shows. I'm talking about the Mediterranean. Uh, the other shows, I usually talk about uh, Caribbean, Bahamas, and uh, uh, United States. Anyway, okay, we're moving on to Crew Quarter. And as always, listen, Crew Quarter is uh, brought to you by uh, Marine Fluid Analysis powered by Amsoil. We got some cool stuff going on with those guys, so please check them out. Uh, but you know what? Uh, these new engines are $350,000 each, uh, and uh, fluid analysis is like 15 bucks. So you do the math. Damn it. Okay, this week on Crew Corner, uh, there's been some buzz going on about reference letters uh, for Yacht Crew. Uh, apparently somebody left a boat and they can't get a, le a reference letter from the captain, and now he's not answering his phone or his email. So what's the deal with reference letters? I personally believe reference letters are very important because uh, people are so transient and people move around, uh, phone numbers change, uh, international versus local and all that. So it's always a good idea to get a reference letter from someone if you've worked for them. Now what's the criteria? Would I give a reference letter out if you were on the boat for two weeks? No. Uh, I, I think the minimum, and you guys can tell me what you think, should probably be three months or more, maybe two months or more. But if you day work, I get I get day workers going, hey, can I have a reference letter? I'm like, no, you can't. Uh, give them my phone number and I'll, I'll tell them how you did. The fact of the matter is I can't judge what somebody's gonna do in one day or a week. You can keep your act totally together and then totally lose it in week three. So uh, what do you do if a captain does not give you a reference letter? Well, there's nothing you can do. It's, it's, their, it's their prerogative whether to give it to him or not, or to give it to you or not. This guy looking for one and the captain's not answering his phone or his email probably tells me that he wasn't happy with your with your work. When you leave the boat, hey, everything's great, bye-bye, shake your hand, stay in touch. It's really just a go away, I'm done, if you're not getting a, a reference letter. I don't think phone numbers are good references uh, because 
as a captain, let me explain what we do with the reference letter as a captain. Uh, if I see just phone numbers and no letters on a, ref, uh, on a, a resume, it makes it harder for me to decipher. Usually I'll look at the name of the boat and go, I know that boat, so I'll give that person a call. Otherwise, I don't know who I'm talking to. I mean, this could be your girlfriend, this could be your boyfriend. So it makes it a little harder for a captain to kind of figure that out. Uh, if you're in the United States, don't give phone numbers to some guy in Germany or something like that. Second thing, don't give reference letters from 15 years ago or 10 years ago. You need three current uh, references within, say, five years time period. Now, which reference letters count and which ones don't? Well, first of all, a captain should be getting a reference letter from the owner. That's it. If a captain's getting a reference letter from the engineer or the stewardess, in my mind, that's like, oh, okay, so you didn't even rate one from the owner. Captains do not work for the engineer and stewardess. Why are they even writing a reference letter? If you are crew, you should get it from the captain. If you're a crew and I see a reference letter from the owner, first thing I say is why? Uh, well, okay, maybe the captain left, maybe there was just some issue there, maybe the stewardess or crew member was on the boat for years and the captains were there for months, you know, keep changing. That's okay. But if you're working on a boat with a captain and he won't give you a reference letter and then you get it from the owners, that does not hold as much weight. Why? Because owners see you 10 weeks a year. That captain's lived with you for a year. He knows all the tricks. You're obviously not going out drinking and causing trouble when the owners are on board. So that's a that's kind of a weak reference letter. If you're, I've seen engineers give me reference letters from deckhands. I've seen deckhands give me references from second stews. All these don't count. A uh, reference letter is supposed to define how you worked, how you followed direction, uh, how you you listen to instructions and stuff like that, and would you be able to come back again? A deckhand cannot accurately tell you tell uh, anybody that you've completed any of those tasks because it's not part of the deckhand's job. So there's no easy answer. Try and get a reference letter when you can. If you can't, try and get a phone number. I think in the exit interview, you should really sit down and say, hey, how did I do? What can I do? This is very important. What can I do to improve and, and stuff like that. Now, last thing, I've got phone calls from people trying to hire ex crew where I'm shaking my head going, what the hell are they thinking putting my phone number there? They were the worst crew member on the planet. I don't say that, but you really need to figure out who your allies are and who is not. That's it. I mean, if you've got nothing but crummy references, you ain't gonna get the job. That's worse than having no references. Anyway, I'm Doug, and you can see my boat got back together. So uh, we're bringing it up to Key Largo, and uh, we'll see it. We'll see you next week on Yacht Industry News.